Hi there, and welcome to this week's Growth Execution Webinar. We are here every week to talk to you, growth leader, SME, uh, founder, entrepreneur, about how you can help your business to grow and to grow fast. Uh, this week, we're focusing in on your uniqueness. What makes you so distinctive? Um, the question we're asking is, what should my USP be? So, as we dive in, we just want to bear in mind that there are three distinct disciplines that you should be thinking about whenever you're thinking about your business. They are product, marketing, and sales. All right. Now, this particular uh, element is very firmly in the product part. So, this is your product USP. It's the fifth element of the 15. So, um, what does product USP mean? That's the first thing you need to know. Uh, what many uh, understand it as is unique selling point or unique selling proposition. Um, those are essentially three individual words, all of which are important. All right. So the first thing is the uniqueness. There's got to be something about your product that is very, very different to what else is out there in the marketplace. And one of the challenges that you'll face is that if it's really good, the, the thing that you produce, your product or your service, um, then you're going to find pretty quickly that others are, are copying you. All right. So that's really the the way that these um, the competitors can kind of latch on to what it is that you're doing um, and then try and kind of compete out of the market. So whatever your USP is going to be has got to stand the test of time. It's got to stand up to those challenges, um, those attacks. Uh, and it's got to be something that is that is distinctive enough that it is very um, obvious that it's that it's yours and yours alone. All right. So that's the unique the you bit of what you do. Um, S is as important, right? It's a selling uh, mechanism. It's a selling point, um, and that I think is is one of the things that can often get missed in this this whole kind of conversation about USPs. Is you know I want to do something different, and it's just going to be really kind of quite wild it's going to be something quite radical people are not going to know what's hit them it's so new it's so so brilliant um but actually does it sell because if it doesn't then it's just a kind of it, it's a folly it's something that um everybody will look upon and go that's pretty cool but i'm not going to buy it um and that clearly is not going to help your business to grow uh, by any means so your usp needs to be unique and it needs to be a selling mechanism and it needs to be a, a point or a proposition it needs to be something that somebody can can actually actively acquire as a result of um of, of their interaction with you of purchasing um that the item whether it's a product or a, or a service from you and from your business all right so that's uh what usp means um now we have spoken before about the, the, the other uh, four elements in product and their product concept, product, um, product service, product design, product concept. Now, these four are essentially um, the bits that, that, that make up your products, that, that build it up. And, and product USP is the fifth element. So essentially, product USP has got to be one of these, right? It's got to be within either pricing, service, design, or concept. Now, if we go back through them in order, and we go back to, to, to the element four, which is product pricing, um, and then you ask yourself, right, is it possible that product pricing can be my USP? All right, so can I find a unique price that is all mine and nobody else is going to be able to compete on? And the answer to that, um, I'm afraid, is a resounding no, you can't. Just not. Uh, and for those that have tried competing on price, and I count myself in, in that cohort, um, I ran a magazine business for a while. And uh, one of the things that we looked to do when we relaunched into the market was to slash our advertising costs or the cost for people to advertise with us um, to undercut absolutely everybody else in the market. It was very busy. It was a luxury property magazine in central London. Uh, and we, we undercut everybody. Um, and that was great for a bit, and particularly, you know, that all of those advertisers with us were thinking that this is this is really good. But guess what happened? Before very long, competitors started to cut their their prices too, and they started to undercut us. Now, you can only go so far before that becomes utterly self defeating, and in the end, you are going to not just lose that particular 
battle, you're likely to lose the war. Um, because when you, the people that you're going up against tend to, particularly if you're young, right? If you're an SME and you're up against some, some more corporate or larger or long-standing organizations, what they will do is they will essentially smoke you out. So they will keep their prices lower than you can keep your prices for longer than you can keep your prices low until such time as you you just have to raise your prices again. And then you've got to go and fight. You've got to find something else to, 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 to use as your USP. So um, whether you're going so low that you're looking to compete on prices being USP or you're going super high and going, right, we're going to be the most expensive one out there because that's going to be our USP. Um, again, what will very quickly happen is somebody will do something much more expensive than you. So pricing is so, um, it's so basic and it is so um, simple that anybody can compete on price. So if you are looking for your USP to be um, anything um, that, that stands the test of time, you cannot make product pricing your USP. All right, so put that to one side. The next one um, up in the little pyramid is product service. Product service is the people that you are here to serve, right? So can you deliver to a unique group of people a service that nobody else can? Um, and whilst it is possible to, to, to go so niche that it is a very um, unique offering that you have, I don't know, um, purple-haired female skateboarders, um, that's a niche, right? That's something that you may have a product that perfectly fits that group. Um, but if it's successful, then guess what? Somebody else is going to come along and have that target market in mind as well and produce something that is very similar to what you're doing too. So again, the, the, the group that you are here to serve um, is very rarely a good idea for you to focus upon as a USP because it will very quickly become obsolete. So next up, in the pyramid is product design. Now this is slightly more interesting and therefore slightly more likely is product design is, is how you take your customers from vague interest all the way through to delight and advocation to others. Um, and the way that you do that, the nuts and bolts of it, you know, how you include different you know, human elements, systematic elements, uh, all of that can be very, can be very unique, right? It can be very distinctive. It can be very you. Um, and that's, that's great. Um, and therefore, that there is something in that. But again, all too often, somebody will come along with something that is that is similar enough, you know. And if you think about some of the, um, you know, the, some of the ingredients that go into a very particular dish or a particular, I don't know, uh, cereal, breakfast cereal, um, very quickly you get ones that are like corn, like Kellogg's cornflakes, but aren't Kellogg's cornflakes, but they've got the same ingredients in them. So broadly speaking, most people don't really care that much, all right? So those ingredients, the design, the things that makes you very specifically you um, are very easy to be broadly copied to the point that it is increasingly difficult for you to claim that what that the way you do something is, is very, very unique because others can come along and do it um, and do it similarly enough, all right? So Product design is a possibility, but it's really, really hard. And you're probably going to need to get some lawyers involved at some stage when inevitably a competitor overreaches and, and um, essentially does exactly what you're doing. Um, and that's really not a good basis to um, launch a business or to build a business on the back of the fact that you're going to have to deploy lawyers um, relatively quickly. Um, so that then brings us back to product concept as your USP. All right. And this is absolutely where you need to be thinking. Your product concept, remember, it is the answer to the question, why am I solving this problem? Why am I solving this problem? And the answer to that is going to be very, very personal. It's going to have to be a lot to do with your own history, uh, your own knowledge, skill set, what you've been involved with in the past, your passion, why you believe this is important. Um, and that's not something that, that can be copied in any combination. All right, so because it's so personal to you, that's the thing that's your USP. So I would always, always, always argue um, and always um, discuss with clients and entrepreneurs that you need to make your product concept your USP. All right, so the answer to the question, why am I solving this problem, is your uniqueness. And what you need to then do is use that uniqueness across all of your marketing, in your sales process as well, to make sure that people understand it, get it. And then once that that 
um, the, that value system, that mission is, is evident, um, then you'll find it very, very difficult for anybody else to, to try and copy and try and rip that off. All right, so that's essentially what USP is. That's where you should look for it. Um, just very quickly, we always want to talk about, uh, give you an action to do this week. Um, so it's about getting buy-in from stakeholders, okay? And there's there's a number of different ways of doing this. You can go out and just tell them um, that this is, this is who you are, this is your USP. Um, you can try and involve them in, in framing the actual wording around that. And I think that's a really, really powerful way of getting people's buy-in is to have some sessions where you say, look, you know, what, what is it that we're here for? And you guide them towards the right answer, which is the why are we solving this problem? Um, but then you can get them to use their own words. Um, and that can be a really strong binding agent within a business and within a team to enable you to make people not just understand what it is that you're here to do, but really, really own it and uh, and, and want to be part of it and want to spread the word. So um, core um, the groups that really need to know and understand what your USP is, is to your shareholders and investors, uh, or significant others, people who have any kind of emotional stake in your business as well, um, from family to, to, to good friends. Um, then your senior team and your staff. Um, and again, it's, it's really exciting to get them involved as early as possible in trying to frame this. And your current and future clients, all right? Now, they need to know what it is that you stand for. Um, and it's a really good recruiting sergeant as well. It actually helps people to um, buy into the business, not just from a financial viewpoint, but also from an emotional viewpoint. And that means that when you come to release other products or services or other competitors try and target them, if they've got that real belief and passion for what you do, then they're unlikely to move and to um, and to, to choose an alternative to what it is that you do. Um, also, every week we want to give you a recommendation. Now, this again is one of my favorite books, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It feeds into your uniqueness because what it helps you to do is to really identify um, the things that you do well and the things that really get you going and the things that are really important to you. And if you can combine those things with this habitual way of displaying them and, uh, and, and, and surfacing them, then that can be a really strong um, way of ensuring that all of those different groups that we just discussed know what it is that you're doing. You are living your values as well as talking about them. Um, and Atomic Habits is a really, really great way of, of, of showcasing that. And I'd highly recommend that you, you have a look at it. All right, so that's it for this week. I hope you've got some, um, some really good insights into um, how you can find your USP uh, for your business. And there is plenty more as ever on the Grosham website, G-R-O-W-T-I-O-N.co, Grosham.co. Uh, please do go and have a look, see what you can find there. Um, we have tons and tons of stuff from daily growth tips to newsletters. Uh, there's the Growth Execution Academy. There's all sorts there that you can learn from right now. All right. Well, listen, um, thank you again for being part of this week's Growth Execution webinar. I hope you've got what you need out of it. Um, have a great growth week um, out there. Ensure that uh, everything that you do is leading towards your USP, is helping to build it. Um, and if you're ready, then let's get growing.